Welcome to Lazy Hiker GPS Bible for Backpackers, Session 1, Part 2. Now we come to the K of F-U-C-K, Keep Your Distance. Speed is elusive, time is subjective, but distance is eternal. So we are going to look at some actual example on how to measure distance. Now we are back to Google Earth. Let's see how we can measure distance. So we click on the ruler and we go to the path and we change it to kilometers because I'm not American. So we want to know the, the time that takes us from Cairo to Aswan in Egypt. So we, uh, first we need to measure the uh, uh, distance first. So we click uh, start from here and then click here going along the uh, Nile. So you can of course uh, plot the straight line into here but you probably won't be very realistic because the train is probably not going to go across the river. So after you uh, you connect the dots together from uh, Cairo to us when you find out the distance is about 800 kilometers and that's 759 so it's about 800 kilometers. And previously, from uh, uh, understanding the speed, you know that in a developing country, the average speed of a bus or train is about 60 kilometers an hour. So you divide the 800 kilometer by 60 kilometers, and you will get the times about 13 hours. So the traveling time, by my estimation, from Cairo to Aswan is about 13 hours. Now that you understand how to estimate time by measuring the distance, we come to the most important phase of the macro planning of our trip, which is to connect the dogs together. Previously, in Find Your Destination, we have created a list of must-see places, and now I have created about 17 of them, and we are just going to see how we can connect those 17 places together. First, let's look at the big picture. So, uh, most of the places is uh, concentrated on four areas. In the north, we have the uh, Cairo and Alexandria. In the east, we have Petra and Wadi Rum. And in the south, we have Luxor and Aswan and Abu Simbu. And in the west, we have the Western Oasis and the Siwa Oasis. So, as you can see, uh, those places are uh, separated by the Red Sea and the desert. So the best thing you can do is basically a T-shaped travel. So from here to here and from here to here. You are not going to travel from here to here not very easily without passing through here because you have to cross the Red Sea. The same thing from uh, when you go to the oasis to Aswan, you probably need to go from along the Nile before you can reach the oasis. So let's connect the dogs together, shall we? The first thing you need to do is drag and drop the uh, waypoints uh, within the folder called must see so that they are in the order that you want to visit them. We can create a path to uh, link the dogs together. So we click on add path and we will create a path called the Egypt Macro Route. And our starting point would be from Cairo because uh, that is our uh, POE, point of entry. So we will arrive at the airport. And uh, from there, we will go to a city called uh, the Bubastis. That's where the uh, cat cemetery is, where you can see the cat mummies. Notice I skip over the Egyptian pyramids, that's because we are doing uh, macro planning right now. So uh, for each city, we only take care of uh, one point. So when we are doing micro planning, we will uh, take care of the, the details. So from uh, Bubastis, we will travel to uh, Port Set. And we probably should switch to the measurement uh, tabs so that we can keep track of the distance we travel. So uh, from Cairo to uh, Port Said, where you can see the Suez Canal, the total distance is about 169 kilometer. From Port Said, we want to go to uh, Wadi Rum in Jordan. The most direct road seems to be going straight across Israel, but uh, if you do that, you will pass a place called the Gaza Strip. And even if they allow you to do that, you don't you don't really want to go there. So a more sensible way is to go down the uh, Sinai Peninsula and go up to a port called Taba, and from there take a ferry to Akoba, from Akoba to Wadi Rum. 
and you notice the distance is about 839 kilometers, which is approximately the same from uh, Cairo to Aswan. They have a nice little desert in Wadi Rum. From Wadi Rum, you want to go to Petra. That's the place where they make the Indiana Jones movies, where they have the temples built into the temples, uh, built into the uh, cliffside. From Petra, you want to travel back to the same route, back to Akoba, and from Akoba to Tabar, uh, Tabar, and then you want to make a stop at Dahab. Uh, that is a beach city. Uh, near uh, next to the Red Sea where you can do some diving and from Dahab you want to go to Mount Sinai where Moses received his uh, uh, Ten Commandments and uh, he, he talked to the burning trees in there and from Mount Sinai you go back to Dahab and this point you probably want to go to Luxor so in order to go there you probably need to travel back the same route along the uh, Sinai Peninsula and then along the Nile all the way until you arrive at Luxor. Luxor is the place they have the Valley of the Kings and the Tutankhamun's Tomb and the Luxor Temples. From Luxor you want to go to Aswan and in Aswan you can do a side trip to Abu Zimbu which is over here. And after you visit Abu Simbu, you go back to uh, Aswan. And in Aswan, you might want to take the Faluka trip back to Luxor, which will take about three days. So you go along the Nile to Luxor. And from Luxor, you uh, want to go to the Western Oasis. Uh, you can, uh, there's two options there. You can go back uh, directly to Cairo first and then go to the Western Oasis or you can go directly from here. If you go from here, it's actually, uh, it might take a longer time. Uh, it's a shorter distance, but uh, take longer time because of the switching of the bus and you might want to, uh, you might need to switch bus at night. So from Western Oasis, you might want to uh, visit uh, Farafra where they have the white desert there. From Farafra, you might want to go to Siwa Oasis, where uh, Alexandra once visited there to visit the or oracles. And from Siwa Oasis, you might want to go back to Alexandra. Alexandria is the place where you can see the uh, Greek library. Uh, it was already burned down in the, uh, during Caesar's time, but uh, right now they have a new one. And you can also see the, uh, the lighthouse of Alexandria. It was one of the ancient, uh, se ancient seven wonders of the ancient world. Uh, the lighthouse is no longer there, but uh, you can see uh, uh, like uh, Muslim uh, castles in there. And from Alexandria, you will end your trip back to Cairo. And from Cairo, you will take the airport back to your own country. So the total trip is about 5,036 kilometers. Notice this is a very rough estimate, so this round might not be uh, completely correct, but uh, sometimes you might estimate longer, sometimes you might estimate shorter, so it will be roughly correct. And what, does, what can we learn from the 5,000 kilometer distance? Remember, back when we uh, at the slide for uh, understand the speed, we have this uh, uh, graph in there, so uh, we need to uh, estimate the speed of our trip so that we can find out the total time we need to doing this trip. So uh, for if your bus is uh, or train is traveling in uh, like a mountain area, you will use the 30 kilometers. If you are traveling in a uh, normal roads like this, t uh, this uh, trip in here, we probably will use the 60 kilometers. And if you are traveling in places like Europe or Japan, you probably would use the 90 kilometers number. So uh, back to our map, as you can see, most places, uh, I would say it's, a, it's quite normal road. They don't have uh, uh, mountains in there except uh, a few places in here. Uh, 
they probably don't have a highway and, uh, except from Alexandria to Cairo. Those places they might uh, travel a lot faster, like uh, maybe a hundred kilometers an hour. But for all, all other places, it would be mostly 60 kilometers. So we would take the number 5,000 kilometers divided by 60 kilometers an hour, and we will get. By dividing 5,000 with 60, you get 83 hours. That will be the total travel time of your trip. So what does it mean? So it means if you have one week, you will be spending 12 hours per day on bus. If you have two weeks, that means you will spend six hours per day on bus. That is still kind of insane. So if you have four weeks, you will be spending three hours per day on bus. So by just knowing the distance, you will see that uh, if you want to do a trip like this, you probably want to have around four weeks time, probably more than four weeks. Because you already know how much time you have on your in your holiday, so you can decide which part of the trip uh, to take out. For example, if you only have a three week holiday, you probably want to take away this part of the uh, the trip if you have only have two weeks you might want to take off this part too so you only go to Aswan and Abu Simbu and then go back to there so that is how we use a uh, F-U-C-K to do a macro planning of our trip so F-U-C-K is for macro planning if you are traveling solo you need to learn how to F-U-C-K yourself and if you are traveling with a partner you need to F-U-C-K together and that's about macro planning. In the next video, we will talk about the micro planning of your trip using the commandments 5 to 8, which is SHIT. And we will see you next time. And thanks for listening. And please visit our website www.lazyhiker.com. Thank you.